Hi everybody, Nick again. Uh, welcome to week three of my Fusion 360 uh, Flexible CAD class. Um, today we're going to be looking at modelling up a, a piston for a car engine. Uh, there's quite a bit of sort of complex geometry involved and today we'll also be looking at some additional features and a few tips and techniques as we go along. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, talk to you later. Bye. Okay, everybody, I've got a fresh design file. I'm going to go and save as piston into the admin project. Okay. I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane and put a circle in the center with a 92 millimeter diameter. It's turned black, so it's fully constrained, positioned and, and sized. So hit finish sketch. I'm now going to extrude that by 45 millimeters. Now, I could shell this part under modify, as we've seen before. I could, I could select a face and give it a wall thickness of three millimeters, but that doesn't give me a variable wall thickness. If we go into section analysis, pick a plane, it's a constant wall thickness all the way around, and I can't change that. If I hit OK on section analysis, incidentally, um, it puts it into the browser as part of the structure, and I can just turn that on and off. I can use that again later. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to choose another way. I will sketch on this top face and I want it three mil wall thickness. So 92, I'll make that 86 diameter. Okay. So I want the walls three mil thick, but I want the bottom face, um, bottom section thicker. So I am going to Sorry, finish sketch, and I'm going to extrude that down as a cut. Um, so it's 45 millimeters high. So if I choose a 39 millimeter distance, or minus 39 in this case, and it defaults to cut, you can change that, of course, but we're going to leave it at cut, which is what we want to do. So as I went, back in time, I lost my section analysis. I'll put that in now. Let's just check. As you can see, I've got a six mil thickness there and a three mil there. Hit OK. And turn that off under analysis. OK. I'm going to fill it the inside edge to two millimeters. Be a constant radius because it's a geometric shape, symmetrical. Okay. And I'm also going to chamfer this outer edge to one millimeter. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is sketch on this front plane again. No, not the front plane, sorry. Bottom plane and use that plane there. Now, as I'm sketching right this moment, um, I'm going to go into wireframe view and rather than going down here to the display settings and visual style, um, I can hit control seven. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm going to put a line 
from the top center to the bottom center, just some reference geometry. And if I highlight that line, and go over here and hit construction, it makes it a dashed line. Now, if I had a dashed profile, I wouldn't be able to extrude that. It's just simply there for reference and, and helping with my construction. Because I want to put a circle right in the center of there. It's going to be a 20 millimeter circle. I'm going to go back to control six to get me back into rendered mode. And I'm going to finish that sketch and extrude. Now, I don't want to extrude it one way. I could extrude it two ways. And you can have varying lengths either way, but I want to go symmetric. As I pull this handle, the other one follows it. And I'm going to join that in for now. And hit OK. Now I want to split those parts out. So how do I chop those off? If I go to split body, the body to split, there's only one body on the screen. There it is. So I'm going to pick that, but the tool I want to split it with is this outer edge. And I'm going to leave extend splitting tools on because it seems to work better. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK to that. So now I've got three bodies. So I don't want these overhangs, body two, body two, just turning on and off, and body three. I don't want these um, in the file. So I'm just going to go right click and remove body three. OK. Now, I want to go back into sketch and sketch on this face again, on this plane rather. Let's just go control seven. And I'm going to make a, another circle in there. 12 millimeters, finish the sketch. And I'm going to extrude, cut that symmetric. I'm just going to pull it straight the way through the part so I know it's going to cut everything. Okay. Control six back into rendered mode. Okay, so this thing's taking shape. Okay, I've got my chamfer on the bottom. Okay, I want to reuse an earlier sketch. So if I open up sketches, once you finish sketch, they automatically sort of turn themselves off. Um, so there's the sketch. Um, so I've just turned sketch three on that made this boss. Now I'm going to use that geometry again. And this time I'm going to cut a section of this away. 20 millimeters both ways. Hit OK. Now I don't want to see that sketch anymore. I've used that. OK. Now I'm just going to add a chamfer to both of these, all of these actually, one millimeter chamfer and hit OK. Now I want to create a sketch on this plane. I'm just going to spin that around using that little arrow. And I'm going to go into Control 7 into wireframe mode. 
Now I want to draw a circle. Place it in the center above the part and make it 100 millimeter diameter. And I'm going to position that center of the circle to the top of the part and make it 30 millimeters. Okay. And then going to actually, I shall draw a rectangle from there to there. And I shall trim that part of the circle out. And that part and that part and that central part. Now then I'm going to fill it on there and on there of five millimeters. Finish sketch. Now you'll see we've got this strange shape. You'll see what I'm going to do now. If I hit extrude and direction symmetric, select those two profiles and just drag it out all the way. And it default it, it changes to cut. It thinks you're going to cut which we're going to do and hit OK. Now, what you'll see when I go back into rendered is it actually cut that boss, those boss portions away. And that was intentional, trust me. Um, so I don't actually want to do that at this stage in the modeling. I would like to have made that cut I just did earlier on. So what I'm going to do is just go back Okay, and delete also that sketch. Let's finish it and then delete it. And I'm going to drag this back. This little handle, you can drag it back to a point in the history of the design. And now I'm going to make that geometry to cut at this point. That round, control seven. Now I'm going to make that a hundred millimeter diameter and dimension the center of it 30 millimeters from the top. Perfect. And I'm gonna just make that rectangle again. Okay, and trim out the bits I don't need. Top of the circle, this piece here, this piece here. And actually, I didn't make a rectangle, I just drew it out like that. So, and then finally put these two fillets in, five millimeters. Actually made that at six, let's turn that back into five. And then, Finish the sketch and extrude. Pick those two profiles. Change your operation to cut, symmetric. Cut all the way through. And hit OK. So now we're still, we've still gone back in time along the history line or history tree. Um, if I now drag that forward, you can see because I've positioned that cut earlier in the history tree, I can just drag forward and it hasn't affected those bosses now. So you can kind of play around what you're actually doing. You can step back in this in this tree step by step. Okay, you can drag it all the way back to the front. You can hit this play button. I have to be at the end for it to play the whole thing. There we go. And it shows you 
how it was actually created. Very useful tool. Okay. We're not far off being done now. I want to create a sketch on this face again. Rotate that. Point seven. See what I'm doing. Now I'm going to make three rectangles. Just go into the um, just go into the part. And actually, I want those to go into the part by a where are we? A distance of from that line to the edge. Can't do that. I'd have to draw a line there better. And I'm going to fix that line. I don't want it to move. And I want to dimension that to that to be two millimeters. There you go. I can delete this out now. And I want a pattern of three of those. So I'm going to do a rectangular pattern. What is it I want to pattern? I'm just going to draw a rectangle around that, a window rather. Um, select the direction. A distance between three of happy with that. As you can see, it makes a nice pattern of those. And hit OK. Finish the sketch, and now I'm going to use the revolve command. And I'm going to choose these three profiles, and I'm going to select the axis will be this central axis and I want it to cut those out as it goes round. Back into rendered mode. And you can see now we've made the oil rings and compression ring grooves. Okay. The final main feature, go back into sketch, sketch on this plane. Let's go back into wireframe. Now I'm going to draw a small line in there. Make that two millimeters long. Okay, just a horizontal line. Now this is a bit free form, but I'm going to do it anyhow. Um, I'm going to start from the end of that line with the spline and go up into the part. And then back out. Double click to finish. And then I'm going to just close that shape. I'm going to change that control point as better. And I'm going to put a small fillet between this and this. Oh, about 20 mil, I say a small fillet. That's good. Finish sketch. So you should have something like this. Now what I'm going to do with that is do a revolve cut to cut the form for the piston crown. So it's selected um, the profile. Now let's go ahead and select the axis, which is this one. It's going to be a cut. And I'm going to hit OK. 
back into a rendered mode and you can see we've got some nice form on the piston. And if I open up this analysis and click on that section again, you can see what we've actually got. Probably slightly thin wall there, but this is really just for demonstration purposes. Let's turn that section off. And the final thing I want to do is just add a fillet to that edge, and that'll be one millimeter, just to get rid of that sharp edge. Now I actually want to do it on the inside edge, so I'm going to go back to the fillet in the history tree, right click and edit. And I'm going to click on this add new selection. And I'm going to pick the inside edge. And because I've got chain on tangent chain, it's just picking the whole thing. Make that one millimeter also and hit OK. And there is our completed piston. Now Go under modify and just give it uh, an appearance. I'm going to make that some sort of aluminium alloy. We probably haven't got many alloys in here. So I'm going to use aluminium polish to drag and drop that onto the car. Close. I'm going to turn off the have it shaded with edges and I'm going to take that into the render area just to take a look at it. Pretty much what we want. Great, so there's my piston, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Uh, some very good techniques involved in creating that piston. Um, and it looked pretty good afterwards, I thought. Anyway, um, I shall see you next week uh, for the final part of this flexible class, um, where we'll be looking at making the conrod and also assembling that at the end. So we'll be covering some ground there um, to give you a good rounded um, feel for the software and its capabilities. Um, so see you next week. Take care, bye.